Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, I'm going to give you just a couple of real brief updates as to what I've been working on in the shop. And then we're going to swing over and take a look at the front suspension on the tube chassis and figure out what we need to do next to get that project going again. I'm still working on the trailer project. It's come along quite a ways. It is back at the point where I can actually use it. It's got lighting and all that stuff. I'm obviously still working on the decking. And then once I've got the decking done, I need to make the ramps on the back. And then at that point, it'll be ready to go get the inspection so that I can retitle it as a utility trailer. And I've been plugging along on the loft quite a bit. It's still got a long way to go, but it's, uh, it's getting there. I don't have any, I mean, there's some plywood laying up here, but none of that's nailed down or anything yet, but it's coming along. But as I've been getting a little bit more organized, putting things away and whatnot, I've been able to start digging out the pieces that I was making for the tube chassis. And I kind of have to figure out where I had like let off with that. If you guys remember a while back, I was making the front suspension for the tube chassis that was gonna utilize Toyota 4Runner components. This is a Toyota 4Runner front hub assembly. And I got so far on that project, I had made the spindle, I had made a lower control arm, and then because of the move, selling the old house and moving into this house, I had kind of shelved that project for a while because I needed to scale back my, well, the mess that fabricating and all that makes while we had the house on the market. But we're in the new house now and I'm getting organized. So I've got all of these components back out and I need to look through them and kind of get my head back in the game as to how I was designing this stuff. So. I'm gonna show you how I've got this, everything kind of set in place, and I'll show you what the next steps are gonna be. So I've got the A-arm just kind of jacked up in place as to where it's gonna connect onto the chassis, and I've got the spindle on there like it's gonna go. I have not tacked these on yet. That's gonna be the first thing that I do. I'll just tack them a little bit because there's a good chance these might get changed up or I'll need to move them a little bit. So I'll just put a tack right there that I can easily break if I need to. I've got these back as far as they can go and I can still get the nut in there. I want these definitely back as far as I possibly can. Then um, this is what limits how far back I can go. And then the front one is as far forward as I can go before the tube starts changing. And this was all set up when I designed the lower control arm. But I want those two points as far apart as possible because the farther apart they are, then the stronger the control arm's going to be. So the spindle's on here, just with the lower uniball in, top uniball's not even in yet. The next thing that I need to do is figure out how the geometry is gonna work out for the uh, steering link here. So in order to do that, I need to get the, the rack installed up here in the chassis. Now I've got this rack. I'll need to fabricate a mount to mount this somewhere somewhere around here like this. I'm not 100% sure where that's going to go, but it'll be it'll be something like this. I'll make a bracket for this and I'll kind of clamp it in place and then I'll rig up some a temporary steering link so that I can start experimenting with that. It's going to be very very similar to how the steering rack setup is on this Baja. Obviously a lot of what I'm doing on that chassis is mimicked off of this one. This one is a really nice setup because the elevation of the steering rack and its location this way sets it up so that the steering rod is nice and parallel and equal distance with the lower control arm. And that makes it so that the geometry stays fairly consistent as the suspension is going through its travel. So that's gonna be the objective when I, I'll build something very similar to this for the other rack. Um, but what I'll do first is I'll build a temporary setup so that I can kind of mock this up in place and I'll adjust it back and forth this way and back and forth 
so that I can find that point where my uh, steering linkage is as true as possible. So before I actually make anything permanent here, since I want to find out exactly where it's going to be, I'll probably make some mount out of thin gauge so that I can easily bend it and trim it as I experiment with this. And then once I have those dimensions, then I'll trace that out and probably, probably make it out of like 3 sixteenths with some support pieces behind it so it's nice and solid. But that's clearly the next step that I need to do here is get that rack and pinion mounted so that I can figure out the steering geometry. I did notice I might have a little problem with this location. I, I mounted this center line to the axis, axis, axle, center line to the axle, and there's a very good chance that I'm actually gonna need to raise this up. I don't think it'll change any of the dimensions of this. I just think this will need to come and probably be mounted up here. And the only reason I'm thinking that is I think when I mount this rack and pinion, as my steering linkage comes down, it's going to work its way down to meet this point. And then it's not going to be running in parallel with the lower control arm. And I need it to run parallel with this. So I'll get the rack and pinion mounted up there, and I'll make some temporary steering linkages here. And I'll square everything up here, and I'll just see, I'll see how it looks and then I'll uh, make changes to this if needed. And then at the same time that I'm doing that, I'm also gonna make a lower shock absorber mounting point here. I know that it's gonna be roughly right around here, which is gonna put me two thirds of the way out on the lower control arm. I don't want it all the way out here because that is gonna require too long of a shock absorber. Cause if, it is, if it's all the way out here, if the connection point is all the way out here, if I was getting like 18 inches of travel, I would essentially need an 18 inch travel shock absorber, which is way too big of a shock absorber. And I don't want it all the way in here just because the forces generated, generated on the shock absorber, if its connection point is this far inboard, is just too much. So the other Baja, it's about two thirds of the way out and that has worked extremely well. So I'll again fab up something temporary out of lighter gauge so that I can kind of experiment with that and figure out where I need to make the mounting points up top. So that's it for this video guys. I'm not actually going to fabricate those parts yet. I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update as to what I've been working on because it's been about two weeks since I've done a video because I get uh, I end up putting all my time into working on the trailer and the loft because I need to get those projects going. But I was excited to get to the point where I was actually uh, able to get out some of these components and start wrapping my head around what my next steps are. And as soon as I get a, a couple of pieces of plywood up on that loft, I'm going to get out some of my uh, sanding and cutting tools so that I can start making these brackets so that I can start uh, figuring out this suspension geometry and the shock absorber geometry and uh, that stuff's pretty exciting. I like, I really enjoy doing that aspect of the build. So anyways, I hope this video is helping you guys a little bit with whatever you might be working on and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.